Bruh. Hello again. It's a cold day out there today. I've got my beanie hat, I've got two layers on. But nevertheless, we're gonna get out and we're gonna make a crosscut sled for the table saw. This crosscut sled is gonna have two different accessories. And these two different accessories, you'll be able to fit onto the crosscut sled. And when you don't need them, you can take them off and hang them up out of the way. So up until now, because of this sliding panel accessory here on my motor saw, I've not needed a crosscut sled. I did make one for a previous table saw I had, so I've got some ideas on how to improve the original design I made with this one I'm going to make now. Now we all know how to make a crosscut sled, there's a million videos on YouTube about them. So I'll keep this bit brief, but I will say one of the most important things to bear in mind is that the slide that goes on the bottom of your crosscut sled must fit flush and have no play whatsoever in the mitre slots on your table saw. Now here you can see the back fence on this crosscut sled is fixed in one position so I can make it pivot. I lined it up with the blade so that I had a rough gauge of it being square and then I clamped it into position and fixed the screw into the bottom. I used the five cut method trick here to square the back fence up. If you're not sure what the five cut method is I'll leave a link in the description box below to something that can explain it far better than I can. And my off cut here was 0.96 of a mil out between top and bottom. So I did the calculations, readjusted the back fence until I had this perfectly straight cutting cross cut sled. Right, so now we've got the uh, crosscut sled built, we can now make some jigs. So the first jig I'm gonna make is a 90 degree mitering jig for things on picture frames or for trims on finishing, things like that, so you can get a perfect mitered angle. So the first thing I did was to mark up the center point of this piece of board I'm gonna use for the mitre jig. I then used my set square on the angle and a ruler across the top of it, lining it up with the centre mark and then I drew a line to the bottom of the board. I repeated this step on the second side. And then after changing the blade in my Evolution Traxel to a much finer tooth cutting blade, 
I could lay down the Traxel track along the first line I had drawn on the board and then once I had it perfectly in position I could then cut the first piece of wood off. I repeated this step on the second side, however so that I had a perfect 90 degree angle to the first piece I cut, I lined up my set square along the edge I had first cut and then butting up the Traxel track to it, I made sure the Traxel track lined up with the point. I did clamp the set square and the Traxel track into position so they didn't move when I made this cut. Now I could place the perfect 90 degree mitre template onto the crosscut sled, lining it up with the blade in the middle and ensuring it's square and tight to the back fence of the crosscut sled I could clamp it into position. I took it back out into the garage and flipped it over and then I marked 250 millimeters in from the sides on both sides and then I could drill out a shallow depth with a 20mm forcing bit so that the tea nuts could sit flush in the bottom. I then used this 7mm drill bit with a depth stop on so that I could drill through the base of the crosscut sled and ever so slightly into the 90 degree mitre template. Now these star knobs that I'm going to use to secure the templates into position just measure under 6mm, so I'll swap out the 7mm drill bit for a 6mm drill bit and then in the drill marks in the bottom of the template I can place a scrap piece of wood under the template and drill out two holes for the star knobs to fit through. Then back over to the table saw with the template, I added some washers on the bottom of the star knobs and then I could line the template up with the holes I drilled in the bottom of the crosscut sled and secure it into place. I made a clearance cut in the very top of this template and then I could give it a try out with a few pieces of scrap I had. So as long as you cut your mitre joint on opposite sides of this template, you should always get a perfect 90 degree join. And as you can see here, as I slide the two bits together, it made a really, really tight join. Really happy with that one. So the next jig is a box joint making jig. Now, if you search YouTube, you'll find a plethora of different box jointing jigs and some of them are absolutely fantastic. Loads of plans you can download, but they're quite a bit of time investment. And if you're someone like me, you're not gonna use them a great deal, but they're handy to have, then I think this next accessory is just for you. Right, for this next jig, you need something that is as thick as the kerf of the blade on your table saw. In my case, this piece of aluminium is 2 mil thick and my blade is 2.06 mil thick. So I'm gonna go with this. You could, of course, rip something down out of wood, but I have this, so this is what I'm gonna use. So I cut the piece of aluminium bar with the angle grinder. And then back over to the crosscut sled, I previously cut out these two pieces of plywood. The first piece of plywood just has to have one cut made in the middle, the same width of the kerf. The second piece, however, needs to be the width of two kerf cuts. So I achieve this by sneaking up on the cut and making it ever so slightly bigger each time until the two pieces of aluminium I cut fitted nice and snug into the gap. Then I mixed up some five minute epoxy And then putting the epoxy on both sides of this first piece of aluminium that I'd cut, I could slot it into the piece of plywood I cut with the one kerf thickness. Of course wiping the excess off before it dries. Then once it had dried I could add some masking tape over the left hand side of it. 
slide over the second part of the jig ensuring that the right hand shoulder of the slot is flush against the aluminium bar and then only applying some epoxy on one side of the second piece of aluminium bar I could slot that in ensuring it glues to the left hand side of the second piece. I added the masking tape so that the two pieces of aluminium didn't stick together. So these box joints I'm going to make, I want to make them as thick as the thickness of this piece of MDF I'm going to use. To do this, I fixed the first part of this jig that had the one kerf width cut into it to the back fence of the crosscut slab with these two screws. The blade is set two thicknesses of the piece of wood I'm going to use from the aluminium stop using these two offcuts. Then to make your first cut, you remove the offcut closest to the blade and then slide your piece of stock up against the offcut closest to the aluminium bar. Holding the stock in position, you can then slide out that offcut and make your first cut. Then you add the second part of the jig, sliding it over the aluminium bar. Then you can butt up your piece of stock to the stop on this second fence and make your second cut. Now you've made these two cuts, this would be the first socket for a finger joint to fit in, so you can clean up the wood in between the cuts. Then as you can see here to make your second cut, you lift the stock up over the stop, ensuring it's flush one side, make your cut, slide it across to the other side of the socket and make your second cut. And then clean up the wood in between and you do this all the way down the piece of stock you're cutting. Now to cut the box joints on the second piece of stock, you need them in a different position to the first piece. So to do this, you line up the inner shoulder of the first finger joint you cut against the aluminium bar. And then your second piece of stock, you line up flush with the side of the first piece. You remove the first piece and make your first cut. And then you can clean that socket out. To make the next cut, you line up the outer edge of the first joint you cut and then you butt up the second piece of stock flush with the first piece of stock you cut and then you can make another cut. And then you just slide over your second piece of stock over the bar till it hits the inner shoulder and make your next cut. And you just carry on with this, working your way all the way down as you did in the first step. Then once you've cut everything out, you can then do a test fit. The good thing about this jig is if your joints are too tight or too loose, you can then adjust the first part of this jig to accommodate these issues. So there we go, two really quick and easy jigs you can knock out in less than a day for your table saw. I've quickly cut this out on the 90 degree mitering jig and it's come out really well. It's not glued together, I'm just luckily holding it together with my hands here. And then obviously we went and made the finger joint jig and they come out really well. They come out really well, slightly loose. But that's the good thing about this jig is you can adjust it to suit your needs. So that's why we always practice on a bit of scrap first. Anyway, hope you liked the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment down below. I'll leave links to everything I've used in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again next week.